I was saying that you should excuse me. I'll be able to speak in English only. Although I had my engineering education in Andhra Pradesh and I'm a graduate of Andhra University, but I'm not very fluent in speaking in Telugu. Myself and a team from Delhi Matore Corporation, they are here today. The purpose of our visit is <coughs> to prepare a detailed project report for the first phase of Vishakhapatnam metro system. The Honorable Chief Minister <coughs> had sent for me about one and a half months back. And his mandate is that the first phase of the Sarpatham Metro detailed project report should be ready in about four to five months time. And after it is approved, the concession or the Metro concession should start immediately. And his vision is that within about three years time of sanctioning the project, at least a part of the metro system should be operational. With this mandate only we are here. We had a good exchange of views with the municipal engineers as well as with the Vishakhapatnam Urban Development Authority people. They had given us very excellent presentation, a lot of information has been given, which will make our task very easy now. Our immediate aim is to go through the city, go around the city, get ourselves very familiar. And the previous studies have already indicated the busy corridors. We want to study these busy corridors and assess whether technically these corridors can be considered for a metro system. Whether the metro will be elevated or underground, this decision also will take when we go around. Once we decide on the corridors in consultation with the municipal municipality and the urban development authority. We will present it to the government and the government will give the clearance for these corridors, after which we will carry out detailed surveys for these corridors. Detailed surveys will include a fresh traffic assessment, then a topographical survey, then soil surveys, that is geotechnical surveys, environmental studies, all that we will complete. <coughs> Our intention is to complete all these studies within the next three to four months and get the detailed project report ready at least within the next six months time and submit to the government. That report will <coughs> bring out the corridors to be taken up in the first phase Corridors which can be considered the second and third phase. What will be the cost of the project? What type of ridership can be expected? How the project is to be funded? What is the type of organization necessary for the implementation? The implementation schedule, all aspects will be covered by the detailed project report. So that the government will have no difficulty to take a final investment decision. DMRC has prepared the detailed project reports for all the metros in the country today, of which 10 metros are under construction in 10 cities, of which three are already in operation, and one more will, be, will start operation very shortly. Many of them are in very advanced stages, and DMRC has also prepared detailed project reports for another seven or eight cities more. 
till very recently the government had set a benchmark of 3 million population for a city to be eligible for a metro system but the present government has lowered this level and they are constrained even cities with 1 million and above also eligible for a metro system and visakhapatnam having a population of more than 2 lakhs becomes immediately eligible for a metro system so there will be no difficulty once the project report is ready to get the project sanctioned the dmrc will spell out how it is to be implemented as i told you the time frame required for implementation the fund requirement for each year how the funds are to be raised what type of <coughs> fair structure that is ticket charges are to be levied and all these aspects will be covered by us and we'll bring out <coughs> what technology is to be adopted what type of technology what type of coaches what type of signaling system what type of electrification system all that we will uh, recommend in this project report since we have been also given the responsibility of vijayawada metro also where we have already done the preliminary studies we have identified the two corridors for vijayawada which the government has already approved and we have started detailed surveys already in vijayawada so our attempt will be that the technical parameters will be same for vijayawada as well as for visakhapatnam the main intention is <coughs> that if the, both systems are same then the procurement process can be together except for the civil construction civil engineering construction the signaling system procurement of trains procurement of the electrical systems they can be common and we can combine both the cities together in which case there is a definite advantage at uh, the scale of economy economy that is possible if each city is to be do it independently the cost will go up if they are done together the cost can come down by 10 to 15% according to us that is also will be one of our aims that these are both will have common <coughs> technical parameters for vijayawada we have already finalized the parameters so more or less the same thing we will finalize here and our we will go around the city and see whether these parameters will suit the terrain conditions of the visakhapatnam one main difference between baswada vijayawada and visakhapatnam is this city is little more undulating but it has got wide roads already the bus rapid transit system is working successfully here we will take that out into consideration we will ensure that there is no conflict between the brt and the metro there will be complementary and supplementary to each other this will ensure so this is the task before us i am not able to give you any further information which will be the corridor and all that at this stage which we hope to finalize very shortly we will be going around the city today and uh, i think by tomorrow lunch time we'll be able to uh, finalize in consultation with the local planners because we have to go by their experience their knowledge they are the people living here they know uh, uh, which corridor deserves we consider first all that we we'll take into consideration we have to only see that the technical feasibility of these corridors for a metro system must got to be seen and in our scheme we would like to have the metro as much as possible elevated not underground where it's totally impossible to have an elevated then only we think of underground because a metro system is a highly very 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 expensive thing metro the average cost of an elevated metro system will be something like 200 to 220 crores per kilometer 
And if it's underground, it may be about 500 or 550 kilometers, and we have a, rupee, a cross per kilometer. We have to take that into consideration. In a metro, constructing a metro is not that difficult. It's not a big challenge, according to me. But making the metro financially sustainable is a real challenge. We don't want to construct a metro and make it a burden to the state government. That it should not be like the normal, you find the, the uh, road transport corporations, particularly I'm from Kerala, I know, <coughs> the Kerala bus transport, KSRTC, is such a heavy burden on the, on the state government, which requires 100 crores subsidy every month. We don't want that sort of situation to happen with the metro. Metro should not need any sort of a subsidy. The main difference between a road-based system and a metro system is that in a metro, it, it has to meet the entire cost of the civil structures, the electrification, signaling, uh, trains, everything has to meet. Whereas in a road system, BRT for example, the government, somebody pr provides a road, all the infrastructure facilities are provided by somebody. The operator has to only get the buses and run it. That will not be the system, the case in a metro. Metro, the metro authority, naturally, when a metro comes here, you require a special purpose vehicle, a, spe a special organization to construct and to operate and run it. That organization has to find the means to fund the project as well as to operate and maintain it, maintain it also later on. We have to be therefore very careful to see that the metro ultimately does not become a huge burden on the state government. State government means the people. Ultimately the government resources come from the people only. It's really a burden on the people that we have to see. So this is our mission and this is a mandate. And uh, of course, we will be setting up a team in Vishakapatnam. The Delhi Metro Rail Corporation will have a team here. We'll supervise the survey work, preparation of detailed report. Most of it will be done from the corporate office in Delhi only, where all the expertise is available in Delhi. Experts will be coming to the city often. Each department, experts will come. <coughs> For example, power supply, electrical engineers will come. Signaling, signal engineers will come. Rolling stock, they will come to see about the depot area, which is to be earmarked for stabling and servicing the train sets. This will be seen. But there will be nodal officers here who will be licensing with the the survey that is going on in the city and licensing with the city authorities also. Are you very clear? Yes, any, any? We will, we will, we, that will be taken as a guidance. That may not be the final. We'll take that as a guidance. We'll certainly consider that also. Sir, does the cyclone uh, pose any challenge to the effects of the cyclone? Because we have seen winds past 200 kilometers during the recent cyclone. Mm. Does it pose any problem? In, when we plan our structures, Sir. we always take into consideration the seismic vulnerability of the area Sir. and also the other cyclonic vulnerability of the area. Like that we plan the structures. And in regard to trains, when such things happen, we don't run the trains. Yes. They are immediately <coughs> be taken to the depot. Sir, both Vijayawada and Vaisak, is there a uh, minimum assessment of the length of corridors initially, and length of the corridors initially planned? Yes, Vijayawada we already decided. Yes. 20, uh, 27, 27 kilometers. Yes, and uh, here also, it will be around about 30 kilometers, initially. Sir.
Tirupati is an entirely different project. That is also the Chief Minister wants Tirupati to be taken as an independent project. So there we are doing a feasibility study only to start with. Sir, as the Sapata is going to have become a smart city, Sapata is proposed to have a smart city. Smart city. So suppose if you begin this metro project, will it not be a huddle? Then it becomes the smart city? No, no, no. Why should it? It will because add on. The, the metro will add on to the smartness. The, the, the metro will add on to the smartness of the city. Don't worry about that. <laughs> Sir, will the BRPS corridors complement in the initial stage? Because we have two corridors which are in advanced stage. So, what in metro they speak about that last mile connectivity. So, will BRTS be able to do it for metro? Will they be complementary doing it? With BRT will be serving certain areas. Sir. Metro will be serving certain areas. Sir. The last mile connectivity will come not through this, that will have to be by feeder services and other measures. Sir. So, in planning a metro, our main focus will be we have to touch the railway station. We have to touch the major bus depots and the the core city areas, what we call the the commercial, the central business district. We call it CBD, Sorry. central business district of the city. These things, these three areas have got to be covered. Okay. So thank you very much. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs>